So in the album um, Flax, I really love the East African collaborations. And I think that the best, and maybe I'm biased because I'm from East Africa and Kenya. You know, like my favorite song in the album, I think is Ready, Night Boy and, and Wendy Kemunto. And uh, when the song came out, there's some people who are even asking, um, who's Wendy? Because Naiboy is super huge, but why did you decide to put those two in a track? Because I think it was a really big deal for Wendy because she's been fast rising and having to collaborate with an A-lister like Naiboy was thanks to you. Uh, okay, I would say the celebrity you see today was once an upcoming artist. You know, so everybody needs an opportunity and everybody needs a platform to be heard. Even uh, myself, when I was coming up, I needed a platform and I got lots of platforms. So I, I just kind of felt like my calling is to help, you know, young artists, fast and rising artists, you know, uh, get on platforms that they could be heard, especially the good ones, ones that have really worked their craft and they are in a position where, you know, I know that saying that says when preparation meets opportunity is success, you know, so I was at Coke Studio and working with different celebrities. And here was this lady that was uh, backing up. So she was doing um, background vocals, you know, just singing as a backup singer. And for some reason, I just felt like there's something special about her voice, you know, and uh, it wasn't a big deal to approach her and say, hi, I'm working on my album. I would like to feature you on it. At first, she thought I was joking, like she couldn't <laughs> believe me. And I said, yeah, I'm serious, you know, so we got into the studio and uh, I made the beat from scratch in her presence. And I explained to her how I want uh, the song to come out, you know, how, what direction I wanted her to write and how, you know, I wanted her to record her vocals. And she did, you know, exactly how, you know, we planned to record it. Then as soon as we we're done, uh, the following day, I met Nightboy, you know, at Cook Studio. And I said, yo, bro, there's a track I need you to listen. So he listened to it and he was like, yo, this track is fire. And he said, oh, who is the artist? I'm like, the the, the, the backup singer. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I'm like, yo, you mean she did it? Yeah, yeah. So I just said, bro, you know what? I'll need you to bless this song with a verse, you know, and I would like to have it on my album. And he said, sure, that he would do it. And that was how we recorded same day, you know, uh, as soon as he heard it, he recorded and that was how we recorded the song. So um, the other collaborations, there's Saudi Soul and Files, there's um, Ravani and Skills, yeah. there's um, Victorian. Udo Banks, yeah. Um, are we going to see music videos from these other collabs? Most definitely, most definitely. We're working, uh, currently we're working on the video with Saudi Soul and Files, you know, and uh, uh, Skills and Ravani too is in the works. Then uh, the one with Kado Bank and Victoria Kimani in the world. I'm so excited that, you know, all the East African artists featured on the album, you know, and uh, they, we have plans to shoot the videos, you know, yeah. So we're, we're, we're working on it. So um, your other um, side, which not everybody knows, is your a businessman, an all-rounded businessman. Um, you're the founder of the Alternate Band, um, which is Africa's uh, biggest live performing band. You know, Alternate performed with the likes of Tiwa Savage, you know, One Africa Fest. And uh, you guys have formed a very close unit where you uh, live and work together, where you rehearse all day long, where you post your stuff on YouTube. And recently I saw your stuff being posted on... Um, WhatsApp group, like an artist WhatsApp group in Kenya, and the people were asking on the group, do you guys know this this cool band from Nigeria which does good mashups? And I'll show you that. But it's just like um, people are getting to know you beyond maybe a performance, you know, because of how you're packaging your content and putting it online. So tell me about the story of um, the alternate sound, the band members, you know, where did this idea come from? I started of as a musician, you know, uh, from my parents' church. So I've always had that uh, music background where I, I used to play in church, you know. So when I became a music producer, I did not leave that aspect of playing. I was still playing in church, you know, and uh, music is what I love to do. So you know that statement that goes, uh, do not complain about what you can fix. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that talks about value. It speaks about value, it speaks about identifying a problem 
and creating a solution. You know, so I'm, I'm a big believer of creating value. I do not chase money. I feel money will only chase you when you create value. You know, so I decided, have been successful as a producer, what other, you know, uh, aspects of music production or the music industry can I now venture into, you know? And I then realized that, okay, it will be easier to venture into the live performance sector because I'm a musician and I can play the instruments. I said, okay, fine. When I looked at the live band, you know, music industry, if I would put it that way, I've, I've found that, you know, a lot of bands, you know, doing stuff and doing amazing. So big shout out to all the bands, by the way. But then I said, if I start my own band and do the same thing, then it, it will not make sense to you guess. So I said, okay, what is lacking in this whole live performance industry or performing industry? And how can I create value and provide solution to a very, very uh, important problem. Mm -hmm. So then I realized that, I, I think I'm about to share my secret. Well, let me just say it. <laughs> so I realized that, that uh, we're in a technology driven age mm -hmm. and a lot of musicians, you know, a lot of bands have like say eight to 10 man band, like instrumentalists playing. You know, if you want to really achieve that very full, you know, sound. But then I said, you know what? Why not start up a band that can cut down the number of band members to four and just make it like a live band DJ? So where we, if an artist works with us, you don't need a DJ because we can DJ and play live at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that was it. So finding the guys, we've always been playing together in the same church for eight years. But we didn't know that at some point we were going to become alternate sound. So when I got the idea of starting a, a live band DJ, and now looked at my friends and instrumentalists at that point that I was cool with, and I said, you know what? I've been playing with these guys for a long time in church. We've already formed that bond, and you know, um, uh, we've discovered our sound. Why not just make it more professional and official, and just take it out to the mainstream? And I approached, you know, the other three guys and I said, you know what? This is my idea. This is what I want us to do. Let's try it and see how it goes. And they came on board. And then we started venturing into, you know, doing our mashups and um, creating live band experience where you book us for an event and we, we DJ and we play live at the same time. We rehearse with artists. We function as official bands for events where a promoter books us to play for all the artists. So it, it helps the promoter save costs because you don't have to fly all the artists with their bands, you know? So what you do, you book us and we rehearse with all the artists and play it even more than what they expect, you know? <laughs> you know, so for us, it was just about uh, uh, the need to just create value and be able to just uh, cover the niche for ourselves in that whole live band industry. So that was what gave birth to Autumn and Sound. So which other band is even coming close to you guys? The uh, truth about it is that there are a lot of bands doing really good and doing really well. But you see, for us, I used to tell people, Alternate Sound is more than just a band. Mm -hmm. Alternate Sound is actually a record label for bands. Mm -hmm. We're just the pioneers and the first set. Mm -hmm. So in a couple of years, we'll start signing other bands. Mm -hmm. Yes, so so that at the point when you just hear alternate sound, you think of different groups, different bands signed on that alternate sound, you know, just doing the same thing that we do. Now, what's your opinion of is African music? What's your opinion of Kenyan um, artists and their music? Um, there seems to be a problem when it comes to promoting ourselves or um, appreciating ourselves. And there seems to be a problem sometimes um, where artists here feel like maybe we're not good enough. And sometimes um, you need even an outsider to, to, to accept you or to tell you it's fine. Or sometimes you need to get out and go out there and, and just experience other things and, and understand that, oh, I'm different and they're different. So I would like to know what you think from your perspective. 
<laughs> You're actually putting me on the hot seat now. <laughs> okay, well, I, I heard about the campaign, uh, the play Kenya music campaign, and personally, it's my personal opinion. I don't think it's a bad campaign. I do not think it's a bad campaign because if Kenyans don't play Kenya music, who will play Kenya music? They say charity begins at home. Do you get so? Uh, the reason I think the reason why the world is beginning to accept Nigerian music is because we as Nigerian love our music. So it's the way we treat our own that will now, you know, uh, make other people see that way. I don't know if you understand. So if you come to my house and you see me disrespecting maybe one of my staff, right? I, I will not expect you to respect the person. I don't know if you get because you almost just uh, in your mind yeah. you would disrespect the person because that's what I'm doing. Yeah. But if you come to my house, even if you don't know the person, but you see how I really value and respect the person in your head, you feel like this person is very important. I don't know who the person is, but the fact that gospel is treating this person is why I think this person is very important. It's the same way. So when I come to Kenya and I. I if I see how Kenyans, you know, are really respecting their artists, supporting them, promoting them, it will also help me feel like, you know what, what is it about this Kenyan? Let me even research, let me, you know, do that kind of thing. So my point is, it starts, charity begins at home. So I, I greatly support, support that. It shouldn't be out of, oh, saying, oh, whether the Kenyan artists or producers are good enough or not good enough. The truth about it is that there's always room for improvement. No matter where you are, there's always room for improvement. So, and do you know when you appreciate a child, the child seems to do better and do more. But when you keep castigating a child and talking down on the child, you kill the child's self-esteem, morale, you know. So I believe regardless of if, if the artists or producers are doing well or not, it starts with encouraging them supporting that i think that's the word and i think the media has a lot of role to play when it comes to that because an artist will not promote his own song in his house i don't know if you get my point he will record in the studio he has to be out there so if the artist brings the song to you it's not left for you to say okay put the song out there do you get and another way i think you know uh, it, we can bring people's mind into uh, developing themselves and their craft is there has to be a standard. So so somebody like you, for instance, sits in that position where you can help a lot of these people grow. How? If they know that, oh, if I take myself to a Aniko PR, she's going to, you know, uh, make help my song, you know, get out there. Mm -hmm. But then Aniko is saying, here are the conditions. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to, your song needs to be able to get up to this standard, meet up to this, you know, uh, production value, this quality and all of that, unconsciously you realize that they know you can promote them, but then you have certain expectation of them in terms of quality, then they will sit up, you know, so I think it, it's responsibility lies on both, you know, people like you, which is the industry stakeholders, and also the artists and producers themselves. Then anybody that refuses to sit up, then it's nobody's fault. Because even in Nigeria, there are certain people that are not, you know, being heard and they've been doing it for a long time. You know, so everything boils down to quality and value. You told me that you have, you know, platforms where you do like seminars, entertainment seminars, because it never stops. You, it's, I think it's a fight and a campaign that should not end. It's not, it's not just a one week, oh, hashtag play Kenya music. It should be a campaign that continues till you see the results. That's how I think, you know, uh, 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 change happens. You don't just talk about it one week, one month, and it trends and it dies. No, you have to till you see the change.